welcome back. And today we are going to continue on with Abraham and primarily what is going on with Ishmael, his first son, and his soon-to-be son, Isaac, uh, starting in Genesis chapter 20. Uh, Genesis chapter 16 was where um, Sarah, Abraham's wife, said, well, there's no way that I'm going to have kids. So, you know, I like Hagar over there. Maybe you should uh, have seed with her. And that, of course, in the long run here doesn't work out as we are going to see. Genesis chapter 20. And I'm mostly going to read these because I'm only going to do about three chapters. And there is a lot that is applicable to our, I don't know if you would call it our political state in the world today, and a lot that's applicable to history between what's going on with Ishmael and Isaac. So here we go. And Abraham journeyed from thence toward the south country and dwelled between Kadesh and Shur and sojourned in Gerar. And Abraham said of his wife, she is my sister, again, to a guy called Abimelech. King of Gerar sent and took Sarah. So here we have again. This is earlier. Abraham did the same thing. He doesn't. He doesn't want. Now Sarah at this point is around ninety years old, <laughs> and Abraham is still worried that they're going to take his wife. And sure enough, they took his wife, um, and he's worried about people killing him or something to try and take his wife. So they say they're brother and sister again with a guy uh, named Abim Abimelech. And he, here is a map showing you what's uh, happening at the time in this region. This is where uh, Abraham came from, the land of Ur. He was in Haran. And then God told him to go to the promised land, which is right here, which is where the Canaanites are, where they where they own it. And right now he's around Beersheba in, that, in this general area here where he is, he, he already had gone to Egypt and then that was because of a famine. He went into Egypt and that, I, yeah, it was the Pharaoh where he said, told, told his wife, say you're my sister. And then the, Sarah, uh, the Pharaoh got in trouble. And now he's doing the same thing here in Beersheba with Abimelech. So we'll continue on here. Verse 3, But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man, for the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. Abimelech had not come near her and said, Lord, will thou slay also a righteous nation? He knows it's God. Okay, This idea that only the Jews can be saved in the Old Testament, or you had to be a seed of Abraham to be saved in the Old Testament, they're you have Melchizedek here. You have Abim Abimelech. Ab yeah, Abimelech here. Who knows who God is? You have the guy in Egypt. I forget his name off the top of my head. All these people know who God is. She said not unto me, she is my sister. And she, even she herself said, he is my brother. The integrity of my heart and innocence of my hands have I done this. He's explaining. Look, I didn't know. They told me they were brother and sister. Both of them did. God said unto him in a dream, Yea, I know that thou didst in the integrity of thy heart, for I also withheld thee from sinning against me. Therefore I suffered thee not to touch her. So old Abimelech had some ideas, I guess. Now therefore re restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet, and he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. And if he restore or not, know that thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are thine. Therefore Abimelech rose early in the morning and called off his called all of his servants and told these things in their ears, and the men were sore and afraid. The people believe God. These people know who God is. Again, this idea that nobody in the Old Testament was saved except the Jews or had the ability to be saved unless you're of Abraham. You have obvious believing people here. But because they didn't have the works or the law or because they weren't circumcised, these people weren't saved. Interesting. Interesting. This is why I'm going verse by verse because there is a lot, a lot in this that tells us about the character of God. And Abimelech called Abram and said unto him, Why have you done this? What did I do to you? I'd be saying the same. What did I do to you, Abraham? Sicken God on me. What's going on? And what have I offended thee that thou hast brought me on in my kingdom great sin? 
thou hast done these deeds unto me that ought not be done. Great sin, messing around with someone's wife. And Abimelech said unto Abram, What sawest thou that thou hast done this thing? And Abram said, Because I thought, surely, for the fear of God is not in this place, and that will, they will slay me for my wife's sake. He thought, because of witnessing what's going on in Sodom and Gomorrah and some of these other places, he didn't know that these people had uh, morals and that they believed in God. That was his explanation for it. And yet, and, and yet indeed, she is my sister. He's, he's saying, look, I didn't lie. She is my sister. She is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother, and she became my wife. And it came to pass, when God caused me to wander from my father's house, that I did unto her, and this, this thy kindest, which thou show unto me, at every place, whether she come, say of me, he is my brother. He is explaining that he told her to say that. He told her to lie, sort of lie, half lie, half truth. Abraham never gets in trouble for any of this, by the way. And it's funny, Isaac, later on with Rebekah, does the exact same thing. It's like, it's like Abraham just passed A, A Isaac. <laughs> Rebecca's pretty cute. If you go anywhere, just say she's your sister. Oh, these guys, these guys. The Bible is kind of funny sometimes. And Abimelech said, Behold, my land is before thee. Dwell it where it pleaseth thee. So Abimelech um, here, I believe it's around Beersheba and around in this area. He says, look, you can you can stay here all as long as you want to. Everything's going to be fine. And this this comes up later. Uh, when there's a little bit of a disagreement about a well that Abraham's people um, dug. And unto his Sarah he said, Behold, I have given thee a brother a thousand pieces of silver. Behold, he is to thee a covering of the eyes, and to all that are with thee, and uh, all with all the other. Thus she was reproved. So Abraham prayed unto God, and God healed Abimelech. I don't know why I have problems with that name and his wife, and his maidservants, and they bare children. For God had closed fast up the wombs of the house of Abimelech because of Sarah, Sarah, Abraham's wife. So he made them all sterile until Sarah got out of there. Genesis chapter 21. Um, now, Genesis chapter 21 here, we're going to have the birth of Isaac. And yeah, we're going to read this one too. The Lord visited Sarah and that as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which God had spoken him. So Sarah is 10 years younger than Abraham, and Abraham is 100 at this point because he received the prophecy at 99 years old, I think. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare him, Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son, and Abraham was 100 years old when, his, when Isaac was born unto him. So I, that means that Sarah would be 90 years old. She was 10 years younger. And Sarah said, God hath made me to laugh, so that all will hear laugh with me. And she said, Who would, who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah should have given, back, given children suck? For I have borne him a son in this old age. So look what God has done for me is effectively what that's saying to show everybody, look, miracles. God's real. And the child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, Ishmael, which she had borne unto Abraham, mocking. So apparently there was some teasing going on between the two. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the mocking is, because they would both be very small children at this point. Wherefore she sent unto Abraham, cast out the bondwoman and her son. For the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. So now, it, it all sounded like a great plan when Sarah really didn't believe she could have children. But then when she has a child of her own, her ideas change. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. And God said unto Abraham, let it not be grievous in thy, in thy sight because of the lad and because of the bondwoman. In all that Sarah has said unto thee, hearken unto her voice, for Isaac shall thy seed be called. So he's saying, God says, don't worry about it. Isaac is going to be the heir. And also the, of the son of the bondwoman, I will make a nation because he is thy seed. Now we have the first separation here between 
Jews or Abraham's seed and everybody else. Or we, we have a, because technically Hebrews aren't necessarily Jews. All Jews are Hebrews, but not every Hebrew is a Jew. And we're starting these, these separations. Obviously, Abraham's got family that aren't of his lineage, and they're Hebrews. And now we have Ishmael, who is a half, half Hebrew guy, Hebrew and Egyptian. And we have Isaac. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and a bottle of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder and the child, and sent her away. And she departed and wandered the wilderness of Beersheba. Yeah, thanks uh, thanks for helping me out and bearing me a child, Hagar. Here's a sandwich and a bottle of water. Go wander the desert. That's what the wilderness is in the Bible. This is the desert. It seems kind of mean and kind of funny. <laughs> and here's a sandwich and a bottle of Evian. All right, off you go. Um, what it was is that Abraham knew that they would be okay. He believed God that nothing bad would happen to Ishmael and he would be a great nation and they would be blessed because they come out of Abraham. Um, so yeah, here's some bread and a bottle of water until God decides what to do with you. You just got to go. Verse 15, and the water was spent in the bottle and she cast the child under one of the shrubs. Now, we're going to talk about that because the Bible indicates here that obviously Ishmael was a small child. Okay, obviously. Ishmael is also becomes the great grandpappy of what becomes the nation of Israel, the nation of Israel, nation of Islam, and the Arabic people. This is his great nation. It comes out of Ishmael and the Islamic folks will say that Ishmael is the firstborn. He is the right, as the rightful owner of the the covenant and the blessing that should be passed from Abraham because he was the firstborn. And they also insist that he was like a teenager at the time that this happened. When it's very obvious that if if um, Hagar could put the kid under a bush, it wasn't a teenager. It was a small child. And she went and sat down over against him a good way off, as it were a bow shot, for she said, Let me not see the death of the child. And she sat over against him and lift up, lift up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the lad, and the angel of, the God, angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said to her, What aileth thee, Hagar? Fear not, for God hath heard the voice of the lad where he is. Arise, lift up the lad, and hold him in thine hand, for I will make him a great nation. Now I guess... God re relays the prophecy to Hagar. And God opened her eyes, and she saw a, a well of water. And she went and filled her bottle with water and gave drink to the lad. And God was with the lad, and he grew, and dwelt in the wilderness, and became an archer. And he dwelt in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother took him a wife out of the land of Egypt. And this goes on to where they, where they eventually went. And it came to pass at that time that Abimelech, the Pishol chief, captain of his host spake unto Abraham saying God is with thee in all the house all that thou doest so I guess he's patting him on the back for that I'm not really sure what eventually happens with Ishmael as he dwells and takes wives in the lands of Canaan and that's where they set up shop the same thing happens with uh, Esau Jacob's twin brother after he decides he gives away his birthright and all of this, he goes to be with Ishmael in the land of Canaan. So this is where our dividing point starts with who is a Jew and who is just a Hebrew. And eventually, you know, the Hebrews become part of other nations where they're not necessarily even called Hebrews anymore. They follow whatever, like the Palestinians and so forth. And now we have a deal here going on with um, Abim Abilamech, where they have this this fighting over the over the well. Not a real big deal, and not something I'm going to cover. Genesis 22. This is where we have Isaac being offered up as a sacrifice. Now again, Islam there. They say that it was actually Ishmael that was handed up for a sacrifice. 
I don't know where they get that because they say that the Old Testament Bible and the Bible is true. Why they would decide to make that a case, but just to let you know that it's out there. Everyone seems to agree that the nation of Islam comes pretty well directly out of uh, Ishmael, though, in that line. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, <clears throat> behold, and, a and he said, behold, I'm here. And he said, take now, take now thy son, your only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. Okay, so pack up the kid and off we go. Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his ass, and took two young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up in the place where God told him. And the third day Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place far off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide here with the ass, and I will take the lad. I and the lad will go yonder and worship, and come again to you. Abraham took the word of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son, where he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they were both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. And he said back, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Okay, so Isaac here is an unknown age, but he's not an infant. He can speak, and he can speak fairly well. So what, six, seven, ten? We really don't know. But many, many a days had passed that he that he sojourned in uh, Beersheba with Abimelech, and so we know how much time here has passed. He's speaking. He's not being laid down under a bush to die by his mother. So he's an older chap. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. God will provide himself. This is the faith of Abraham. And there are people that will say, Well, because Abraham did this, it, that is what justified him to go to heaven. No. Abraham did this because he had faith in what God told him. Because of all the miraculous things that God, he believed God before God had even done any miracles for him. And because of his faith, God continued to bless him. And now this here was a justification of his faith in that he showed it. And God can see into his heart and know that what he was doing, he was truthful and had faith in God. Because this is his son. God told him his son's going to have seed numerous as the stars. All of the same um, covenants and everything will be passed down through him into Isaac. He knows this. He doesn't know how God is going to do it, raise him up from the dead. He's just going to do it because God told him to do it. Verse 8 again, And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. And they came to the place where God had told him of, and Abraham built an altar there, and laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the, uh, on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. This is Jesus, angel of the Lord. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do anything unto him. For now I know how thou, thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted his eyes, and behold, and, look, and behold him behind him a ram caught in the thicket of his horns. By, and Abraham went and took the ram and offered him for a burnt offering instead of his son. Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh and said to this day as the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself I have sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars in heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess, possess the gate of his enemies. Now he's adding on to the covenant and the blessing that he had already given to Abraham. Now he's going to possess the gates of his enemies. 
and thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Is that salvation? No, that is a blessing, because Abraham obeyed. Yes, the Jews do works, because they're the chosen people, and they're supposed to obey God, and when they do that, they get blessings, and when they don't do that, they end up enslaved for 400 years. It's a special deal that the Jews have going on, starting with Abraham. Abraham returned to his men, and they all went home. So that's Genesis 21. We started at Genesis 20, but really it starts in Genesis 16, uh, where, where we have um, Sarah suggesting to go mess around with Hagar, and they bear Ishmael. So just a few chapters. And really what it shows here is where we're having a separation between Jews and everybody else. Regardless if they believe in the true God or not, we have a special deal here with Abraham because Abraham is going to be supposed to be the priest class to um, represent God to the rest of the nations. That's what they're supposed to be doing. Um, not that nobody else can be saved and nobody else can be righteous on the planet except Abraham and his sons. Um, it's that they have the special works and the special blessings to show God to the world. And that's what's going on there. And it's an important book because obviously we have problems um, with uh, extreme religious groups in Islam and terrorism and things like that. And, and they hold to the Quran and that their descendants of Ishmael, who they believe, is actually the one who is the rightful descendant of Abraham at being the firstborn to have these blessings. Much of their religion is based on that um, on that principle. So that's what we have as far as Isaac and Ishmael go. We're going to continue on and we're going to we'll touch on Isaac and Rebecca a little bit but really we're going to go to uh, Jacob and Esau the next time with that. We'll see you later.